live. I think we are. I think we are live. We're here. And I hope you can hear me. I'm trying something new out tonight. First off, let me say my name is Cindy and I'm with Reinvented Delaware. We repurpose and reinvent all sorts of home decor and furniture. Now, the new thing that I'm trying tonight is a new mic. Last time we went live, you weren't able to hear me very well. So I did some research and I found a little tool that I can use here, this little mic, and I'm hoping that you can hear me. My husband is going to be listening in and he's going to make sure that I can be heard. So he's going to let me know. Hopefully he'll come out here soon. And he's also going to be answering questions. And I'm super excited about our project. He just gave me the thumbs up. He just came in the room. Our little dog is here in case you hear him barking. And also disclaimer, we have a big storm going on outside. It is raining like crazy here in Delaware. Anyway, let's get on to the project. I love to thrift shop at the thrift stores. You know that. I have lots of videos here on YouTube of thrift shopping trips. Say that 10 times fast. And we love to find all sorts of things. One of the things that I love to find, let me put this away real quick. One of the things that I love to find, um, there we go, are lamps. I kind of have a bit of a lamp fetish. I really do love little lamps. I've got them all over the house and most of them are on timers. And one of the kind of lamps that I love are these poor little lamps that just look really sad. So a lot of vintage lamps that you find at thrift stores they're not solid brass. A lot of them were maybe painted or polished to look like brass, but they're not completely brass. And this lamp is a perfect example of that. I'm gonna bring it in a little closer for you. You can see this part right here, that's brass. Uh, this is possibly brass, this little cup here that would have, you know, just a decorative part. Uh, this little piece, the finial might be brass. But this right here is definitely not brass, and I don't know about this here. A lot of times they would just take stainless steel and make it look like brass, and then they could kind of pass it off that way. So I came up with a little way of making stainless steel look like faux brass, and I want to tell you about how I did it. So first off, let me tell you the products that I'm use going to be using today. By the way, everything is going to be linked down below in the description or just below the video, it will say, see more. You click on that and it expands and then you'll see all sorts of links for all the products that I'm going to talk about, except for the lamp. Now you've got to go out thrifting to get the lamp. So go and find yourself a lamp for, I think I paid, oh, there's the price right there. It was $4. This lamp was $4. And here's a tip. When you go thrifting for a lamp, ask if you can plug it in. They always have a light bulb. Get the thing plugged in and see if it works so that you can know if it's worth the money. Now, even if it didn't work, it would have been worth the money because it's nothing to, you know, redo the electrical on these things. My husband knows how to do that kind of thing and that's exactly what he does. And let me just ask him a question real quick. Are you okay over there with questions? Yes. Okay. He's on the other side of the camera answering questions. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask and I'll be right here. He'll let me know what the question is and we can go from there. But the camera's so far from me, I can't see the questions. Anyway, always test a lamp at the thrift store before you leave to make sure that it works. They never mind you doing that. They really do not mind. You just have to find a clerk and ask. I asked, this one worked and I took it because I love the shape of this lamp. Now I asked a question in my community post about which lamp I should make over. And I'll show you the other one here in a minute. Um, and we kind of settled on this one here, or else I settled on it because I just wanted to do it. But we might work on that other one too. So for starters, let me just say what we're going to do is use paint to make over these lamps. I'm gonna bring the paint in closer. This is a metallic paint from Dixie Bell. This color is called Gold Digger. And I'm also going to use another color it's called Moonshine Metallics, and the name of the color is Steel Magnolia. I have like a little two-tone, a little two-tone look that I like to do to create this look. Now, this is really fun paint to use. Oh, let me mention this. If you happen to have a lamp that is very shiny brass or shiny something like glass on it, 
And I'll show you exa an example of that here in just a second. We'll get to that. You might need a primer and uh, Dixie Belle makes a great primer. I love this primer. It's called Slick Stick. It will make paint stick to anything, including an air fryer. I'm not kidding. I painted my air fryer. I've got a video here on YouTube about that and a blog post. So if you need it, be sure you get the primer. This piece does not need it because this is far from shiny. So I'm not worried about that. But that slick stick will make paint stick to anything that is slick. So there you go. All right, let's get started here. So the first step that you would do when you bring this lamp home is to clean it. You always want to clean a piece really well before you even start to paint it. Paint will stick to a surface. If it's clean, if it's dirty, even from fingerprints of years and years collecting, then the paint's going to have a hard time sticking. Another thing that you can do, because see how this is like a little cup? See how that is like a cup down? Dust would have just collected there terribly. So you could use a cloth. Where's my cloth? You can use a cloth to get that out. And if it's really hard to get out, now I've already cleaned this one, but if it's really a, like a lot of, a lot of dust, you can use a piece of four aught steel wool. This is a great supply to keep in your workshop. I use this stuff for so many things. So get yourself a package the next time you go shopping at Walmart and keep it in your workshop. But you can take this and just rub out all of that dust. It's going to come right off. When you do that, be sure that you wipe it off because that steel wool leaves a little bit of its own dust. All right. So you want to make sure that that's nice and dry. Before we get to it, I've got some paper towels here and we're going to dry that out. Now, what we're going to do on this is do like a two layers uh, um, look to create some dimension in it. And I decided to start with the color gold digger. Look here. Look at that. Oh, yeah, that's pretty, isn't it? I love that. I almost poured that out. Wouldn't that have been funny? <laughs> I don't know if that would have been funny, but it would have been interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting the first coat on here. Now, anytime you paint, by the way, I've already stirred this up before we started the live. Um, so you want to make sure that you stir it up. But let me just say just about with any kind of paint that you use, I'm going to make sure you can see this. How are you guys seeing this? I hope you're seeing it all right. Let's see. I think that we're going to come in a little closer. Give me a second to readjust my camera. And I want you to really see this. I'm going to take myself out of the screen. Be patient with me here for just a second. There we go. We'll, we'll put that camera back as we need to, but I just really want you to take a good look at this because this, this part's kind of important. See, you can see that I'm painting this. That looks kind of rough already. You're thinking, Cindy, what in the world? Anytime you paint, anything, whether it's furniture or a home decor piece like this or whatever, almost always the first coat looks bad. I mean, it's just, look at the, look at that. I mean, it looks bad, doesn't it? Go ahead and say it out loud. Say it in the comments. It's looking kind of rough, but it's because it's the first coat. It's just, is the way, it's just the nature of paint. You really just can't help it. So I'm going to be watching the time as well. And I want to get as much of this painted as I possibly can without holding you up all night. I mean, I don't want to keep you all night watching me paint this thing. Now, if you have any questions about the paint that I'm using or the even the paintbrush, you're going to notice this is just a little artist brush. I have these listed down below in the, in the description. Remember to click on that see more button and you'll be able to see all the links that I have. Now, if I were painting on my own, I would go ahead and paint this down here. I'm not going to bore you with that. I'll do that when we're all finished with the live. I'll go ahead and finish it up. I don't want to keep you. I'm going to go ahead and paint the part that is the real brass because I just want to make it look as close to, oh, we see some comments coming in. Um, I can't read them, but I see them popping up. So sorry for these old lady eyes. It's just the, just the way that it is when you get to this point in life. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and paint the real brass of this just because I would like it to look uniform. 
So if this were all solid brass, I would probably just give it a good polishing with a good product like, um, there's one called, um, what is that called? It's called Earth Bright. It's a clay-based cleaner. I'm gonna teach you guys how to use that stuff. I'm gonna do a video on that one of these days because it's amazing. But if this were real brass, I would use a really good brass cleaner and just clean it really well and just kind of bring it back to life a little bit. Maybe not perfectly shined because I still like the vintage patina, but I would restore it so that it would look like it was brass again. And I'm not gonna do it with on this because this is not real brass and it has gotten to a point where it's just not very pretty. I mean, it just isn't. Okay, let's see here how we're doing. I'm not gonna paint this whole thing tonight. I'm just gonna focus on this one area right down here. Like I said, I don't wanna hold you up. And I brought my blow dryer out from the bathroom because I wanted to be able to dry this real quick. So let's give it a little, a little dry and maybe my husband can let me know if there's any questions. Sorry for the blow dryer. Let's just blow dry this. You've got to have it dry before you can go to the next coat. So um, just to do this, just to speed it up, I thought this might help. That's looking kind of rough, isn't it? See all the paint strokes? Yeah. <laughs> and this here. You're gonna have to use a little bit of imagination because we're not gonna, going to be able to do the whole thing tonight but you're gonna get the general idea of how much better this thing is going to look. Yeah, there we go. We've got some comments coming in. Thank you so much. I appreciate you watching. Okay, let's go ahead and put another coat on. Nothing like having your hair dryer in the craft room. Do you keep a hair dryer in your craft room <laughs> for those times when you're just a little bit impatient? I know I do. I probably should just buy an extra one and keep it out in my craft room or out in my workshop. Tonight we're inside the craft room in the house for obvious reasons, but a lot of times you'll see my videos and I'm outside in my garage workspace. It's a cute little space that we have set up. It's kind of where I get to do my work and share all the projects with y'all. Okay. Now the second coat is looking better. Can you see that? But it still is pretty streaky. So we're just gonna dry it again and we're gonna have to do a third coat. Now you're probably wondering what am I gonna do with that other color because I put two colors out here and I did that on purpose. We're gonna add some texture or like a dimension to the paint with that other color. I tried this out on another project and I'll show you that here in just a little bit. By the way, that other project that I'm referring to, I've written a blog post about it and it's gonna be live uh, on my blog tomorrow. My blog is reinventeddelaware.com. We have well over 200 tutorials of upcycles, whether it's furniture, home decor. Um, I mean, just, we've just done lots of, lots of projects over there. And I think that you'll enjoy it. Now, if you, if you'll see a link down below that says, uh, join our journey for our email list, we send out free tutorials. Every time we publish a free tutorial, we'll just send it right to your, right to your inbox. And then you can be inspired with that tutorial. But the lamp that we just did was in a collaboration with some of my blogging friends. And we're going to be doing a monthly blog post inspired by a book. I, this is gonna be fun. So the book that we're using this month is The Murder on the Orient Express. Have you ever read that? It's an Agatha Christie. Have you ever read that novel? I have not, and I, I listened to the audio version and it's so good, it's based in the 30s and it's, it's quite a mystery. I love mysteries, I really do love mysteries. Okay, here goes the blow dryer again. Let's see how this is looking. I mean,
mean, I think it's already looking better. Look at the difference of the old, the old color here and, and over here. You can really see a difference on that. I'm loving this already, and I know that the third coat is just going to be that much better. All right, let's see how that's doing. Nothing like a pink hair dryer. Have you ever bought a brass lamp that you've tried to make over? I would love to hear about it. So go ahead and let me know in the chat or down in the comments below. I would love to hear about it. Have you, here, have you ever had to um, redo all the cords? I, I haven't, but my husband has. He has done that. How many times have you done that, hon? A lot. Yeah, probably a dozen or so. One more. A lot. So speaking of cords, I want to show you something. Let me tilt this camera up again. Just so I can say hey. Hey. <laughs> so speaking of cords, when you get a cord or a lamp home from the thrift store, one of the dirtiest parts of it is the cord. I don't know what the deal is, but the cords on these things are filthy. So this one is already clean, and while that continues to dry, I want to show you the other lamp that we may or may not work on because of time, but I want to tell you about the cord on this thing. Oh, what have I done? Let me move that. There we go. Where am I going here? Totally disappeared with my table. There we go. All right, so this is the other lamp that we might work on. I haven't decided, and it kind of dependent, is dependent on time. I got it for $5. This is brass, but the cord on this thing, it's clean now, but it was so dirty that my rag started to look like this, and I'm not kidding. It ended up looking like that. Look at this. So the way that you clean these cords is you get one of these microfiber cloths, damp, with a little bit of cleaner on it, and then just squeeze this, squeeze that cord right in your hand and just pull. Oh, I just got a little bit more dirt. You just pull that, pull that. Be real careful you don't knock over the lamp, but if you do this several times just like that, yep, yeah, I got all that dirt off. You can see my, clean, my cloth is clean there. That's what I did earlier. Look how disgusting. Isn't that gross? <laughs> that just really grossed me out when I saw that. But for some reason, the cords on these lamps are filthy. It, it makes me kind of wonder what the lamps in my own house, like what are the cords like? I have no idea. Anyway, this lamp here, um, it came with a broken lampshade. I paid $5. I had them test it and it works. I believe that this is brass, maybe brass plated. I'm not an expert on brass, but here's why I say that. Let me get this over here and show you up close. This part is nice and heavy. There's, it just has a weight to it that you can tell. This is nice and heavy. So all that makes me think that it's brass, but part of it is worn off. Like right there, it just looks really rough. So what I'm going to do with this one, I think, well, I know, is I'm going to use another product. And for now, we're gonna to continue to let this dry, but I'm going to use another product. Woohoo! I just knocked it off the table. Well, golly, there's nothing like being live. Here's the other product. This is a gilding wax. Let's see if I can get that out of the reflection there. This color is gold. It comes in all sorts of colors. There's silver, copper, bronze, zinc, like all kinds. I got the gold one and I have used this before. And that's from who? Oh, I'm sorry. That's from Dixie Bell. I've got this linked down below as well. And don't you know, I forgot a little thing to open it. So my husband is going to reach right over here and lift that lid up. It's like one of these, you need a little thing to go like that. There's a little stick. It's Thank you. It is a Dixie Bell stick. <laughs> there we go. It's one of those kind of lids like, like that. Now this has some fumes to it. So if you're concerned, use this outdoors. I usually use this outside in my workshop. It's very well ventilated out there. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of it now, 
but if you're concerned about that, if you have any kind of problems like with smells, look, I left the price tag, it was $5. I bought that last year, last February, and I'm just now getting to it. So the gilding wax is like a paste. It's heavy and it's filled with like, I don't know, me metallic something or other. I don't know all the technical stuff for things. Maybe I should, but I just don't. I just know I enjoy using it. And all I'm going to do is put it right on there. Look at that. Can you see that? Look how nice that looks. I'm just using a little stiff artist brush and I'm literally just painting it right on. Once it's dry, you can buff it a little bit. Honestly, I just leave it just like that. Can you see? Yeah, you can see the difference between this area and that area. It really does create a really pretty look. Let's do one of these little feet. See if I can hold that in a way that you can see what I'm doing here. Get in between the little, all the little sections and I'll, I'll show you the difference between the feet. Let me turn that around just so I can see what in the world I'm doing here. Okay. Alrighty, really work that in there. So there's one of the feet that is done and then there's one that is not. It just looks better. It just beefs it up a little bit. It, you can see the difference here. And I would do that over the whole thing. You let the gilding wax completely dry. And then, let me grab one that's done. You get something like this. Now this candlestick, I did it last year, and it was all that brown, like the lamp that we're painting, it was all brown. And look how good this looks now. Isn't that pretty? I put one of those candles, it's like a battery powered candle, I'm crazy over these things. But yeah, doesn't that look so good? I collect these, these um, candlesticks in all different sizes. You can find these at thrift stores and I have like varying sizes. None of them match, but they all just look so pretty because they're all brass. So that's kind of the unifier. All right, let's take a look at this. Let's see how we're doing. So that, don't forget that gilding wax is another way to get a similar look on metal. You can make metal look like brass with the gilding wax. So let's see where we are. Let's see if I need any more of this one color. Yep. This one needed three coats because it was really dark. You know, anytime that you're painting over a dark surface with kind of a light color, and this is, you know, this is relatively light. It up to three coats, sometimes even four. I know when I've painted furniture white, and the furniture is dark, often I've had to do four coats. It's just a very common thing. doesn't matter what kind of paint you use, it's almost always the case. Can you guys see that? Oh, I'm sorry. I did not have that. I hope you all can see this. Let me just really quick put this other coat on here. Do we have any questions? Does anybody have any questions about what I'm doing or any comments about what I'm doing? I'm interested, do you, do you go thrifting? And if you do, what is one of the favorite things for you to thrift for? What do you like to find? Reese, go ahead. Karen Stewart says that she adores Agatha Christie and that she's read most of her stuff. Oh, yes. And you've had a couple comments. The uh, birds of a feather has never heard the term for aught used for steel wool. Oh, okay. Let me address that. Maybe, what else would it be called, Steve? Just... I uh, answered the question, but it's steel wool with a coarseness of four zeros. Okay. It would be like, it looks like a hashtag and then four zeros after that. And I guess here in Delaware, or maybe the United States, I don't know. We've just That's called it. To our area. And my father was a maintenance slash custodian. So I think that's a term they developed. Okay, so he was just mentioning, I don't know if you're able to hear him or not, but he was just mentioning that that was a term that his dad used. And um, yeah, so let me show you one more time. So that's what we call for ought. And then on a steel wool package, you can see the grades. We are at the very fine. And if you were to get number three, that would be more coarse. So bear that in mind when you go to buy a package of this. My package is empty. That was the last piece in that package. So about the Agatha Christie, I think that was Karen. 
yeah, that said that. Agatha, so, Agatha Christie. Okay, let me just show you here. Oh, I got to fix that camera. That's all right. That's all right. I'll just come in closer. Okay, so for the Agatha Christie, The Murder on the Orient Express, I'm not going to tell you the premise of the book because I want you to go read that blog post tomorrow. I wrote a little bit and then I did a makeover. But one of the things on the Orient Express that impressed me was every table in the dining car had its own lamp. I just thought that was the cutest thing. So I wanted to do that for our home, but you can't have a lamp with a cord in the, going across the floor. So I went thrifting and I found this, but it didn't look like this when I started. And let me take this off because that's a glass lamp. In fact, if you saw my last live, take out the little candle because it holds a tea light. If you saw my last live, you saw the before of this lamp. Now this here, remember about that slick stick I was just telling you. This, these were gold glass or orange glass beads, believe it or not. Look at, look at that. Those were orange glass beads and they were, I'm just going to say it, they were ugly. I just did not like them one little bit. So I made them look like brass. Isn't that crazy? And that's with the same technique that I am doing with this lamp right here. So let me put this aside because this is glass. I don't want to break that. That would be really bad. Let me just put that out of my way. And let's see here where we are. I'm gonna break out the blow dryer one more time. We are doing this thing, friends. Okay. <laughs> Nothing like using a blow dryer on a YouTube Live. We are doing it. Look here, look how much better that looks. Isn't that pretty? Really love how this looks. These metallic paints, I know, that looks like a lot of paint. So you can buy these in smaller containers, but you can also use the paint on other projects. So that's the great thing about it. I think we're just about dry. Yeah, that looks so good. I'm gonna show you the difference between the two. All right, let's take a closer look. So here it is now, see that? and. This is what it was. It doesn't even look like pretty vintage brass. I mean, it was just ugly. It was just ugly. But look at this. I mean, that is just so cool. So the next step, so that was the gold digger. The next step to add a little texture, and let me just say, you could put one more coat of the gold digger on that lamp, call it a day. You'd be good to go. It's really pretty just that way. But I wanted to take it another step, and I grabbed the color Steel Magnolia. Look at that. I just wanted to add some depth and dimension to the color. Now what I'm going to do this time, move that over and don't knock it over, Cindy. Wouldn't that be fun? I'm going to bring you in a little closer. Let's tilt this camera down again because I really want you to get a good look at this. Let's get in here. Okay. All right, the technology end of all this, friends, is I'm just going to say it's a challenge. Okay, so here we go. We're going to take this old artist brush, and it's, it's in pretty rough shape. You can see it's not in any good shape, and it's small because I'm working on a small piece. I'm going to take some of that paint. I'm going to dab some of it off. Oops, I got a little hair in there. I'm losing my hair over here. Get some paint. I'm going to dab it off onto my scrap paper and I'm just going to dab it in here like this. You can see that. And then I'm just going to take a little bit, bit of it off. So that's just a little paper towel. I've got it kind of crunched up. And before it's dry, I'm just going to dab it. And what that's doing, now the light is changing it. You know, my, I have all these lights in here so y'all can see me. Let me show you what it's going to look like on the other lamp. This is what it does. See that close up? It adds a little bit, a hint of shine. That silver over top of the gold just adds a, I don't know, it just adds some dimension to the paint that I love. So that's all that we're doing. We're just going to take a little bit of that. Now you don't have to do this step if you don't want to. You could leave it 
just like just the gold, you could add another layer of the gold right on top of your other layers of gold. You could add it in the same way, just dab it so that it won't be any kind of smooth look. You don't want it to be smooth and perfect and you want it to look vintage and aged and this is a great way to do it. You could experiment with other colors of the metallic paint. So this metallic paint comes in, oh golly, I don't know, there was, there's like 10 colors. There's even a pink, which is just the prettiest thing. Yeah, that's looking really good. Oh, I love that. And it's extra shine. That's the lights that I have in this room. In to my eye, as I look at it, it's not as shiny, um, but it's, it's the lights that I have going on in here. So they're reflecting off and it's making it really shiny. So I see some questions coming in, but I can't read the words because they're really little. So Karen uh, Stewart asked if you converted the lamp from electric to um, candle. Oh, that's a great question. So this could have been, this could have been electrified, if that's a word, before I got it. So when I got it at the thrift store, the cord was already on it. I have no idea if it had been a candle before, um, but it could have been. Honestly, if you really wanted it to be a candle, you could just cut off the cord, get rid of the electricity part of it, pull this stuff out here, and put in a little holder for, you could glue it in with E6000, put in a little holder for a little pillar candle. That would be so cute. Now I would advise that you, you know, be smart about where you put that. You want to be smart about that. I really like having little lamps all over the place. So I kept it as a lamp. Any other questions? So again, Karen Stewart asked, um, said it looks like the silver of the moonshine you're putting on tones down. It does. Okay. Yep, it does. It, it knocks off some of the brass look of the gold. And that's why it's looking kind of vintage. Because when we painted that gold digger on, it looked like brand new brass and I didn't want that. So this silver, it's called steel magnolia, it's knocking off or knocking down some of that bright brightness of the gold. But look at that, isn't that so pretty? So Skylark House says, yes, we can see it. Oh, great. Yeah, that's great. Well, I'm gonna back up a little bit here. I'm readjusting my camera. Thanks for being patient with the whole tech end of all this. Let's see where we are. I'm gonna put my lid on my paint so I don't spill it. What else did I wanna say about this project? So let me tell you this, I'm going to finish this project and I'm going to make a community post and I'll post it um, tomorrow. I'll, I'm not gonna finish this tonight. It's 8.30 here at our house and you know, we like to go to bed by a reasonable hour. So I'm gonna finish this tomorrow and then I will do a community post here on YouTube so you can see the finished look and I'll even finish that other one that I used, the gilding wax, so you can see both of them. And let's see, I want you to be sure to subscribe to my blog because that is where I'm going to send to you that you get a new YouTube video, you get a new blog post tutorial of all sorts of things. I'm gonna ask you to subscribe to our channel here. I'm gonna thank you for watching. I'm gonna ask my husband, are there any other questions? Um, so Skylark House, uh Self-identifies as a thriftaholic. Ah, <laughs> I love that. And um, Skylark House almost commented that the gilding wax is amazing. Oh, the gilding wax. Yes, it is a great, great product. I have used it on several things. It is a great thing to use. I love it. Yeah. Well, I think we're just going to be about finished up for tonight. I'm going to finish doing this tomorrow. I'll do that community post, like I said, and you're going to see this brass lamp or brass because it wasn't real brass. You're going to see that makeover of that little, whoops, $4 lamp. And we're, we're just going to make it look 100% like this all over the whole thing. I'm going to put an Edison bulb in there and just really make it look vintage. It's going to be so pretty. How are we on questions? Anything else? Uh, Skylark House says that um, 
referring to being a thriftaholic that she looks for antique furniture, china, architectural sal salvage, Ooh. and anything else that catches my eye, which tends to be a lot. Okay, I'm not sure if you guys could hear that, but uh, Skylark House, you need to look over at her comments. She's getting all sorts of uh, thrift store finds, salvage finds. She's very good at finding architectural finds, and she has a blog too at skylarkhouse.com. Some of her makeovers, well, all of her makeovers are just amazing. And the pieces that she finds to make over, she just can really do a great job. So thanks a lot, Anna, for watching us tonight. I really appreciate that. I have one more question here. Do I? No. No? I just made the comment that you look for ironstone in every nook and cranny of the store. Okay. So that was a comment about the ironstone. I sure love ironstone. And if you want to see any of the ironstone that I have collected, I have a video about the ironstone that I have in that blog post tomorrow. You're going to see more of the ironstone that I have. I have a lot of ironstone. It's fun to collect. Okay. And go ahead. One more question. Karen Stewart asked, earlier about the type of lamp that you were redoing so your research and development team looked and determined it to be a reading lamp so oh this lamp here is a reading lamp that's um what it appears to be oh wow that's interesting to know i really appreciate you looking into that that's a nice little piece of history there this lamp is going to go in our bedroom. I'm doing a little makeover in our bedroom, so stay tuned. I'll be sharing those projects coming up. It's going to get a little Edison bulb here, and I'm not going to put a lampshade on it. I just really love a lamp without a lampshade. My dog is having breathing problems, so if you hear a weird sound in the background, that's my dog. <laughs> anyway, all right, well, I really appreciate you watching tonight. I appreciate you joining and and liking this video, you're gonna go ahead and click that like button right now. And I'm gonna ask one more favor. If you are one of my faithful subscribers, and I think you are because you're here watching tonight, I'm gonna to ask you to click that share button. It's a little button with an arrow. Share this to your Facebook or share it to one of your friends to watch. Or if you have a, a vintage loving, thrift loving friend, send this video to them so they can be inspired to make over something like this here. I think that they would really enjoy it. My husband's flagging me. We have another question. Um, we have a question of, can you please say what you are using to clean the paintbrush? Oh, yes. The greatest thing about this paint is it's water-based. I have a little dish of water right here that I'm just rinsing out that brush and patting it on a paper towel. That is one of the great things about this product is that it's super easy to clean up. And honestly, I, I did bring out something. Let me show you what I clean up the gilding wax with. Let me show you that because you might be wondering about the gilding wax because it has some fumes you might think it's harder to clean. You can't really clean it with just water. This is the brush that I used for the gilding wax. Um, I don't have this link below, but I will link it. Dixie Belle puts out a soap. It's called Scrubby Soap. This stuff is amazing. Get it even if you don't paint because it's really, really amazing stuff. And it smells so good. This one's the lemon. So I think it comes in lemon, lime, and orange. But all you do is you run this bar under the water and then you take your paintbrush, whether it's water-based paint or this oil, I don't know if it's oil-based, the, the gilding wax, I don't know what it's made of, so my apologies. But while the water is running, you scrub it. This is one of those, you guys have seen the scrub daddies? Well, this is a scrub daddy inside and the soap is infused into this scrub daddy. The scrub daddy goes all the way. I mean, it. I've used this in the kitchen. I mean, my husband uses this on all sorts of things. If you get paint on your hand, you can clean your hand. It does not hurt your hands at all. I love this thing. And you just run the water and this over top and this brush will come so clean. And when I'm finished tonight, I'll clean this brush, even though it's haggard. You see, that's pretty rough. I'll go ahead and give it one really good cleaning tonight on this um, scrubby soap. I don't have it linked yet, but after the video, I will get a link for this. You're going to want to have a couple of these, and they make a really nice gift, by the way. I know Christmas is done, but um, if you have a little birthday gift and you have a, a painting friend and they could use a little special bar of soap, or I really, you can use that scrubby soap on so many things, and it does not hurt your hands. It's not harsh at all. 
but it magically cleans this stuff. So are there any other questions? No, I think that is it. We have covered our bases, my friends. That is awesome. Well, I'm excited to get this finished tomorrow. I can't think of another thing to say other than thank you again. Um, thank you for liking the video. If you're not subscribed, I'll ask you to subscribe to our channel. I'm trying to get to that 10,000 because it just really helps our little business if we have more people watching. And then we can inspire more people to find a $4 item at the thrift store and make it a really pretty piece like this brass lamp or the lamp that we made into brass. So thank you again for watching. Stay tuned so that you can see the community post tomorrow. If you miss it, let's see, how do you see that on your phone? I can't remember how to see the community post on the phone, so my apologies for that. But anytime, you can go to my channel, my homepage on my channel, Reinvented Delaware, and you'll see the tabs across, and you'll see the community posts there. And then tomorrow, about 24 hours from now, you're going to see the post of this completed little lamp. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you have a great night and stay safe. We'll see you next time.